Australia ground to a virtual halt on Tuesday when the Federated Under-10s Association withdrew services, stating that in their view it was an unreasonable demand that they wear a sun hat in the sun. They further suggested that the placement of sunscreen lotion on or about their persons was an infringement of basic human rights and was simply not on. A compromise was reached when it was conceded that they should not come over here and do it, but that someone would go over there and do it, and that, yes, they could go to Timmy and Simone's afterwards. Wednesday saw the dispute widen when an affiliated body, the massed five-year-olds, showed their hand by waiting till the temperature had built up and management had about a hundred weight of essential foodstuffs in transit from supermarket to transport and then sitting down on the footpath over a log of claims relating to ice cream. The Federated Under-10s, sensing blood in the water, immediately lodged a similar demand and supported the massed five-year-olds by pretending to have a breakdown as the result of cruelty and appalling conditions. The problem had been further exacerbated by a breakage to one of the food-carrying receptacles and some consequent structural damage to several glass bottles and a quantity of eggs, contents of which were beginning to impinge on the well-being of the public thoroughfare. Government stepped in. Government expressed itself in the form of a brief address. Ice cream would be provided, explained an official, but not simply because it had been demanded. This was not the way to achieve results, and no repetition of this sort of thing would be tolerated. A highly ranked source in the under 10 said, We regret we have to take this type of action. Yet believe me, we tried reason. Strawberry, said someone from the massed fives, with pineapple and blue heaven. Relations seem to have stabilised by Thursday following substantial reorganisation along the lines of a collectivist approach to decision making. The federated under 10s and the massed fives were awake to the possibilities here and by block voting and the use of secret hand signals they dominated meetings and might have taken complete control of policy formation had it not been for an unfortunate incident in which an office bearer in the FUT was arrested for the attempted murder of the National Secretary of the MFYO in an internal disagreement about texticolour ownership. An attempt to establish clearly defined territories and separate job definitions was unsuccessful, as it was the preferred option of each group that it should have the territory and the other should have the jobs. The matter was deadlocked at tea and a cooling down period was thought necessary before negotiations could continue. The evening was passed quietly, except for a near tragedy when the local representative of the Australian Association of Dogs upset a fragile ceasefire by sitting on the Ludo while nobody was looking. Friday was a lay day and the site was visited by independent authorities from the National Union of Grandparents, a benevolent organisation thought to be funded by the tea industry. Differences were forgotten and any slight flare-ups were resolved by the laying on of hands, or in one rather more passionate instance, by the laying on of feet. By mid-morning Saturday, interest rates were improving. Both major industrial groups seemed happy with production levels and working conditions. At 1100 hours, sun hats were provided and a protective lotion was distributed to all personnel. At first, there seemed to be no objection. Then the FUT refused point-blank to put them on or to handle them in any way and the MFYO, in flagrant contravention of previous undertakings, demanded ice cream and plenty of it. Prospects for the rest of the fiscal quarter look a little bleak from here and I can only wish you well. There is a feeling in the market that during recent months the unions have quite consciously prevented disputes from flaring up in a random and isolated fashion and have instead been stockpiling ammunition for a comprehensive showdown. It promises to be a top-of-the-range affair and tickets should be booked early. There are several major problems. The Federated Under-10s have had a range of grievances festering since early in the June quarter when the new clothing regulations were introduced. The Under-10s are known to be against regulations of any sort and their reaction to the provision of compulsory wet weather gear was predictably hostile, despite the obvious fact that the principal reason for the introduction of wet weather gear was the wetness of the weather. All personnel were issued with a standard kit consisting of one raincoat, one warm hat, one pair of gumboots and one pair of warm socks. The Federated Under-10s saw this as a calculated attempt to subject them to ridicule and further worsen their standing in the community. The massed fives were frankly insulted by the whole business. Stripped of its fancy language, they said, it meant that their members would be asked to accept substandard garments which had been recently discarded by members of the FUT. Such garments were quite obviously second-hand, very old, frequently extremely unattractive, and according to a highly placed source in the massed fives, this was typical. It was suggested that management was favouring the federated under-10s by attempting to co-opt them into a sweetheart deal with promises of new clothing. 
Management denied this ludicrous charge and initiated discussions with the Mast Fives to see whether or not they could be attracted into a sweetheart deal of their own relating to some new socks. This rather messy and extremely ill-advised approach backfired immediately. The Mast Fives made it clear that any settlement would have to include a new hat, a new coat of a type specified by delegates according to taste, a proper pair of boots and ideally a book about dinosaurs. Independent tests were conducted by the National Union of Grandparents, a charitable order made up of ex-management personnel who had a pretty easy ride while in office, but whose ability to deal with troublemakers is sometimes uncanny. They monitored a senior delegate from the FUT for a trial period of a week. On the first day, the delegate began the morning shift in the full kit, as detailed in the regulations, although, of course, at the close of play, the raincoat was left at the work site because, in the estimation of the delegate, it wasn't raining. The rest of the clothing was dried during the evening shift as reports continued to come in of statewide flooding. Several towns had been washed away and a great number of people had tragically been buried by hailstones. On the second morning, management provided another coat from a secret supply in the boardroom as driving rain was still falling and only the tops of trees were visible. Although it touched the ground and was described by the delegate as a hideous boring tent, the coat looked well with the hat and matched the one boot that was found. By the beginning of day four, the boot position had been clarified to the point where each foot had a boot, and one of the boots bore the name of the delegate. Another boot was found in the delegate's bag, but even the National Union of Grandparents couldn't work out whose it was or how it came to be there. An office bearer in the Mast Fives did suggest that the boot may have been placed there by Martians, as apparently something very similar had recently happened on television. A marked shortage of socks on the fifth morning occasioned a search of the dormitory zone. Those involved are still only just learning to talk about it. Things were seen which beggar the imagination and reveal a good deal about the so-called dark side of the human soul. On the plus side, the second coat was found rolled up under a bookshelf and inside it were two pairs of socks, a yoghurt container full of deceased moths and an apple which has been carbon dated to the early 1520s. The matter of the bicycle and the object which may or may not have been a sea anemone was dealt with separately and I'll say no more about it here. It hasn't been an easy time for us and it's with a high heart that we anticipate the prospect of spring. There will be more rain of course, farmers need rain and it affords the Mast Fives of course a wonderful opportunity to get out in their new hat and their new coat and their brand new gumboots, especially now they've finished the dinosaur book.